Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're taking a look at Dom Pierre. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well, then welcome to the beautiful French countryside. It is the 19th century, and rival champagne houses are competing to be the best at proving to the rest of the world just how awesome the bubbly is. And I'm going to show you how it works today in a two player run through. I am the yellow player, Jen is the blue player, and there was a fair bit of setup to do. We've got some randomly drawn grapes out in the communal vineyard that we can harvest from. We've got different um, bonuses we can get in the local village. There are four faraway locations that are buying. Philadelphia, Monaco, St. Petersburg, and Amsterdam. Um... And we each have set up our own board as well, which means as part of setup, each of us got randomly three different potential upgrades that we could install in our operation. We chose one, installed it, handed the next two over to another player, and then got two more, and then took the other two and set them up for the future. And I've already gone through all that just to save you the trouble, but there is one more thing I should point out. I am playing with the quick play variant today, which which I think really, well, as you might imagine, speeds up the game and for my money, improves it as well. If we were playing the regular version, we would flip our boards over and we'd be on this side where all of our action discs start on level one down here. But since we're playing the quick play, we're starting on level two, which means right out the gate, we have access to level two actions of harvesting and pressing and sales and all of that. We get to get right to the faster, more powerful actions right away, as opposed to when you play normally, oh, everything starts out as level one actions. And so we're doing, for the first portion of the game, very small iterative steps. But with this sped up version, we get right to the cool stuff that much faster, and I like it quite a bit. Now, also, I should say, because we're playing a two-player game, everybody starts with an upgrade to the goals action. At a higher player count game, this would have had to have been an upgrade you would have drafted for. But in the two-player game, um, everybody has better goals right out of the gate. Um, and as part of setup, I ended up getting an upgrade to my vineyard action and uh, to my uh, my logistics action. Jen also got the logistics upgrade, and she got an upgrade to her pressing action. And then remember we have these. Um, now I should say, if, you know, when I was drafting. I would have ultimately had three to pick from over a couple of turns of draft. One I would install, one I would put as a future upgrade that I would get, and the other one, which in this case was um, upgrading, oh, which one is that? The village action, which is a nice one to upgrade too, but anyway, um, it, you'd put this down as a generic upgrade for later. And it wouldn't be until you have done all your level one actions at least once to get to level two, that you would get to unlock your first upgrade. And then you unlock your next upgrade when you push everything up to level two. Now, as it is, uh, because we're playing in the accelerated mode, this one came unlocked right away. So, um, it isn't over here waiting to be unlocked. So, everybody in a two-player game in the click version has three upgrades waiting on a fourth upgrade. We're already doing level two actions instead of level, level one actions. And otherwise, folks, enough about the setup. Let's actually play this game. How does it work? Well, on your turn, you are always going to pick one of the six available actions to you, push your disc up to indicate that's what you're doing, and then if you're doing one of these actions, these uh, three on the left, which are working in the vineyard, pressing grapes, or interacting with a local village, you got to pay either money or labor, depending on what it is. If you're doing one of these actions over here, logistics, sales, or goals, then you don't have to pay. Um, if you're doing one of these over here, the amount you have to pay is equal to the lowest action disc still on the board. So right now, all of these are tied for making you have to pay one. Whereas, say, if we were later in the game and it was like this. Well, and then I say, hey, I want to do another vineyard action. I am doing a level two vineyard action. Later on, I'd be doing a level three vineyard action. But because I've never done a press action, no matter which action I do, because this is still down here, it still only costs me um, one coin. So, it's a really interesting thing. The game incentivizes you to try to do everything. You kind of want to do everything. But it also incentivizes you to specialize. Because if you keep one action you're just never doing, that keeps everything cheap and you can do more powerful stuff. But, sooner or later, you're going to want to do that other action as well. 
But anyway, right out of the gate, my first action, I do want to go out to the vineyards because I do have an upgrade tile. I am better at vineyard actions than Jen is. So let's go on ahead and do that. Now, Remember, as I said, uh, when I'm doing one of these actions, I look to see how much I pay, and it is the money value of the lowest, so I'm going to have to pay one of my four starting coins, and money is tight, tight, tight in this game. Because we're not after riches. We're just actually trying to spread the good word about champagne. The rules actually talk about this, that in the 19th century, champagne was not really very popular. It was kind of looked down on bubbles. What are these bubbles? And so we're trying to earn prestige more than money. And money is always tight as a result. So I've moved this up. I have to pay one coin, and now I moved up to this space, which is the number two, which means I'm doing a level two vineyard action. So, to the vineyards! What do we do? Because I'm doing a level two action, I am going to plant two more grapes out here, and then I am going to, and after I do each one of them, I am going to harvest and get some grapes in my presses so I can make champagne and wine later on. So, we come to the big old Dom Pierre bag. Uh, which is full of the three different colors of grapes. There's greens, there's purples, and there's black. Let's see what I get. Do, do, do. I've got a black and a purple. And now, by the way, folks, I should say, in real life, it's pretty easy to spot the difference between the purple and the black. In the f in my um, filming room, it's kind of dark. So, in, if, if, so if you're playing in low light situations, it might be kind of hard to tell. Might have been nice if this were a bit more of a neon purple, but in bright sunlight, it's pretty easy to tell uh, which one is which. But if you're if it gets a little dark, uh, they kind of get a little close. As you can see, randomly we have a purple, a black, and two greens over there. And now I'm going to plant two more of these, a purple and a black, because I'm doing a level two action. I can do it in whatever order I want. First, I'll plant one and then harvest, and then I'll plant again and harvest. And when I'm harvesting, I get a better harvest than normal thanks to my special power. And remember, if we were playing the normal game where all of our action discs would have started on the bottom row instead of the next row up, I would have pushed up. I'd only get to do one plant and harvest, but I'm doing two. And I think... Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, oh. Okay. I think, for starters... I'll go on ahead and plant this black. Right, we'll put it right there. And now, first you plant, then you look at all of the adjacent grapes. Not the grape you just planted, but all the adjacent grapes. And you pick one type, and um, you harvest that type. And the number you see is what you get. So in this case, if I pick to harvest, since where did I just put this, it's surrounded by green and black. So if I pick green, then I will get to do a level two Chardonnay, which would join my level one Chardonnay. Uh, by the way, everybody at this par setup, they also got a level one grapes in their um, second press. I've got a Chardonnay. Jen's got a Pinot Munay or Munay? I think it's Munay. I think. Anyway, though. So if I choose green, I'm going to make a level two. If I choose black, I'm going to get a level one. Except not necessarily. My special power is when I'm harvesting for one of my harvests, which could be, you know, one, two, or three, depending on how many, how good I've gotten at vineyard actions, I can actually count the um, token I placed as well. So if I use this right now, if I choose green, there's two. If I choose black, there's two, because I can count the one I just planted. We're good enough to be able to harvest that right away. So Right now, I got to pick. Am I going to take a level two green or am I going to take a level two black? I'm going to take the level two black, which means I get a level two Pinot Munet. Munet, I think. Okay, and now I've got to add it to one of my presses. Now, this press, as part of setup, everybody has a level three quality barrel of wine um, that's already been made. This is waiting to be sold. If any of your presses have been previously used and they've got either um, champagne or wine sitting in them, then they cannot store more grapes waiting to be pressed. So I cannot put it here. So I can put it in press number two or press number three. I'm going to put it over here in press number three. 
three. Because uh, this is my best press for making champagne. If I try to press bottles of champagne in um, press number three, they get a plus... The first pressing gets a plus three b bonus to its quality. So if I were to press the, uh, this level two plus level three, I'd be making a level five Pinot Munet. I, or if I'm, I apologize if I'm butchering that completely. So anyway, so I'm storing that there for pressing later on. But now we got to go back. I am doing some more harvesting. I will now take this and I will put it up here next to this blue. And now, I cannot use my special power again. I can only use this once per turn. That's true for all the special powers. They can only be used once per turn. Um, and so I've got to choose either a level 2 green or a level 1 blue because I can no longer count the thing that I just planted. So I think I'll take another level 2. I'll take a level 2 Chardonnay. There we go. Now, i got to put this on a press. Actually, I get them all, and then once I've collected them all, then I start putting them on presses. So I'm, I'm going to put this over here, and now I have no choice but to put this here. Because the main restrictions when you're filling up your presses with grapes, spent presses that are, um, that, you know, are, are recovering, I guess, um, from having made uh, barrels of wine or bottles of champagne, they cannot be used for new. And you cannot put the same type of grape more than once in a given press. So I have to put this over here. But now when I press this, this is going to be a 2 plus 2 plus 3. This is going to be a level 7. That's going to be huge. That is going to get me a lot of prestige when I eventually press and sell that bubbly. Or I could make wine as well. But I don't get the benefit in this press if I'm making wine. Uh, this is the press where I get a benefit the first time I make wine on a given turn, where it increases by one. But over in this press and this press, I really want to be making champagne. And over here is where I want to make wine. Although it's interesting, I should say, the rules refer to these as barrels of champagne, but then there's a little um, uh, extra thing they said. Strictly speaking, thematically, this represents wine, but for rules, we, ca we consider it champagne, but I want to call it what it is. This is a barrel of wine that I've got ready to sell, and I'm going to make some really nice um, champagne later on. So anyway, that was it, folks. That was my turn. I picked one of my six actions, I moved it up, and then I checked the power level of it and how much I had to spend, and I did it. And although I should say there was one other thing I could have done. When I chose this, you always had there is a seventh option you can do. Instead of whatever you um what, whatever whatever column, whether it's logistics or goals or whatever, you can say, oh, I'm moving this up, but instead I am going to lay off some of my workers. Which means you can take your workers, and at the beginning of the game, we all have one worker standing by our presses, and you can lay them off, and that is a way to get more coins if you're desperate for money. Now uh, that's something you don't want to do. That's like kind of burning a whole turn just to get a uh, crappy coin. But on the other hand, it means, hey, on a later turn, that action will be higher up so that maybe you can get closer to the more powerful versions of those actions faster. But anyway, I, I went to the vineyard. My turn is over. It is now Jen's turn. She could do the same thing as me. She could rush right out, although she doesn't have a special power here. Um, but I think Jen's going to go a different way. Jen, hmm, Jen's going to go to town. Now, this is going to cost money still. And uh, she's doing a level 2 action. These are all tied. It's going to cost her one coin. And uh, she comes up to the village where there are four different actions she could choose. Uh, she could get bonuses. She could sell her the, the uh, stuff she's already got locally for points. She could get accessories to increase the uh, quality of her product. Or she could get some vines. There must be other vineyards uh, in the countryside. And rather than working in our own, Jen could come over here and just get a level 2 uh, black or a level 3 purple. And she wouldn't have had to have bothered um, going out. And because she is doing a level 2 action, she's got four actions to choose from. She gets to do two of them. So she could get bonuses and uh, Pinot Noir. Or sell her bit of... Uh, you know, wine that she's got and get the Pinot Noir or get some sugar, um, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, she's going to get to do two of these actions of these four. What is she going to do? Well, I'll tell you right now, a level three, they don't get better than level three. She is definitely going to take the level three purple grapes, the Pinot Noir. Oh, uh, yeah, the Pinot Noir. Okay. So, um, again, 
this is going to have to be stored like normal. And Jen can put it in either of these two. She'll go on ahead and put it here. So now she's working on a level four plus two. All right. And so now uh, she's revealed a level three Chardonnay, which she'd love to grab and throw that in here as well. But she can't because she can only do this action once. So now she's going to go to these actions, this action, or this action. And this action means we have to look at all the goal cards that are out. These are all multi-use cards. If you get them as a goal, they give you a literal objective you're trying to complete. Score 7 or 12 points if at any given time you've got 3 or 4 or more um, barrels of wine in your presses. So, if you get this, then you want to make sure you have a... Uh, you want to get, well, ideally... Um, four. Uh, so like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, a lot of wine in your presses. And then you could turn this in for 12 points or seven points if you have three. But you'll notice there's like some small print. Those are bonuses. This is saying um, that if you use this card for its bonus, you can get a level one Pinot Meunier, um, which Jen already has one. Hmm. So, does she want to go and get the bonus? Get the level one Pinot Meunier or an, uh, uh, a plus one increase she can apply to any of her presses that will improve the quality of those presses um, or uh, accessories. She could get some sugar or she could get, I don't know what this is. I think this is some kind of uh, wrapper you put around the bottles or something like that. If I recall correctly, I don't think the rules ever say what it is. But so Jen could get any one of those bonuses if she chooses this. She could sell her barrel of wine to uh, get two points, or she could grab a bag of sugar, or she could grab this other accessory, which again, I'm not quite sure what it is, some kind of pounder maybe, uh, but the reason you want those accessories are because when you actually go to sell your wine, I guess they're, they're packaging, they must all be packaging, right? Or in the case of sugar, that's kind of a, uh, because the different locations you can sell to have different things they're looking for. If we look over here at Monaco, they want some sweet, sweet wine. If you have some sugar when you sell to Monaco, if Jen has this, ultimately to sell to Monaco, she could throw the sugar in and the quality of her wine would increase by three more. And the higher the quality wine, the more points you get. So... Uh, she could go for that with the goal to sell to Monaco or or St. Petersburg. They also love uh, some sweet wine over there at St. Pete's. Uh, like for the, the other thing, the other kind of packaging thing, they want that in Amsterdam or they also want it in St. Pete. Uh, here's another accessory. This is a way you can box them up, but that's not available to her. So anyway, so Jen is trying to decide. She cannot take another one of these. Does she want a bonus? Does she want to make some points? Or does she want one of those to increase her quality later when she sells? You know what? I think she's going to go for the bonus. I think she's going to get the other level one uh, Pinot Munet. And um, because she already has one in this, she has no choice. She must put it in that press. Oh, you know what? Actually, bearing that in mind, I think she'll have put these two together because now this is three plus one plus three when she presses this. And this is one plus two. All right. So this is effectively a level three. This is a three, four, five, six, seven. All righty. So that was it for her. Jen went to the village. She had to spend a coin and she got two because she did a level two action. Again, if we were playing the normal version, she would have been down here, gone up one and, done, and only gotten one thing from town. You can see why I like the accelerated version because you're doing so much more stuff so much faster. Wee. Okay. So Jen's turn is over. We're back over here to me. It is my turn. And you know what? I could go to town I could, so I've got two um, presses waiting for me to squish these grapes ground and start making some champagne or wine. So I could do the press action. But no, I'm going to keep harvesting and keep leveraging. Now, I made it up here. It's still a level two action. So I'm still going to grab two from the bag and plant and harvest two more times. Once again, I will get to take advantage of my special power. And once again, because these are all tied, it's only going to cost me one coin to do it. So let's go. What do we got? Because I want to fill these presses up to the brim. I want to get a, uh, a Pinot Noir over here and a Pinot Munet and a, and a Pinot Noir over here so they're full so that when I press, I'm doing a super pressing. Uh, we'll see what we get, though, because you never know what grapes are in season, I suppose. Double greens. Oh, very interesting. Okay. Well. Well, well, well. Hmm. All righty. So. 
boy, what I'd love to do is if this wasn't here, I'd put this here. I'd use my special power to be able to count this plus this, and I'd get a level three right out of the gate. But I filled all those up. But here's the deal, folks. One of the reasons I was doing this is because randomly, as part of setup, some items were put out here. And uh, there's a race to grab them. As soon as somebody puts a grape in any of these spots, they grab this. And that's a coin right there. I want that money. And I've come to get it. So we're going to do that. I'm going to place this. Although, oh, this is the worst thing in the world. No, it's not that bad. Oh, it's not great, though. Urgh. Right, because I want to reach over here. I want to put this here, and then for my second one, I want to put this here, right? That'd be fine, because, hey, I'd get a coin, um, because money is tight. But, uh, you know, so this action would pay for itself. And for the first one, I'd say, hey, it's either a level two green, because I can use my power, or a level one black. And then this one could be, well, it'd be a level two green if I saved my power. The problem is, I'm already full to the brim with Chardonnay. I took a gamble, and I did not draw well. I am not happy with this. I cannot go out there and grab that coin. I could, but when I come here, the Chardonnay I'd pick up, I just have to throw away because I don't have any place to store it. So I, I think I have to give up on my dreams of snagging that. But, oh, shoot. And Matt, that makes my power totally useless because I want to put this green down here and get a level three. Or I'm sorry, it'd still be a level two. I'm not going to use my power at all. What were the chances? Come on, bag. The bag hates me. Anyway, though, I am going to... I will come over here. Alrighty. And now i got to pick uh, either black or green. Normally, I wouldn't be able to pick green, but I can because, again, of my special power. But I don't want any more Chardonnay. I'm already full up of Chardonnay. So... I made a mistake, folks. I should have sold that that cask of wine I've got so I'd be able to have more place to take Chardonnay, but I didn't do it. Anyway, I'll take a level two uh, Pinot Munet, and I will put it over here. All righty. And now for the other one, I will go on ahead and put it right here and get a level two Pinot Noir. All righty. And I will put it right over here. Okay. So, this ca th this press is full. When I press this, it's going to be two uh it's going to be 6 7 8 9 um which means I've almost achieved my goal. We'll worry about that in a second. So anyway, so that was my turn. I'm a little bummed. And also I'm bummed too because now if Jen harvests I've just given her access to that and access to that if she decides to go and do a level two action. But we'll see now what she's going to do. And you know what? I think Jen, she's going to go right to pressing. Jen is going to activate her presses. She's got two presses to activate. She is triggering a level two action. So that means she'll be able to activate both of these instead of just one. Later on, You'll um, when you're doing a level three, you want them all empty so you can activate all three presses at once, which is a way to get more prestigious, by the way, if you get uh, into that level. But anyway, so Jen is doing this. It's costing her a coin. So far, nobody's doing any free actions. And so now she gets to activate two presses. This one's already full. and But remember... Jen is better. She gets a plus one on one of the activations she's going to do. And she can do these in any order. Uh, I think she'll do this one first. So this is a reminder. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in so you can see her board a little bit better, shall we? This is a reminder that the first um, champagne, you can see there's bottles here that represent champagne. The first champagne um, that she activates is going to, uh, what do you call it, um, get a plus three. I think we'll start with this one, and um, Jen will press. And oh, by the way, uh, there is. Remember the, the cost was uh, right. No, did you already pay the cost? I think I did, didn't I? Oh shoot! Yes, 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 I did. I already paid. I paid the one coin right out of the gate. And by the way, that one coin covers all of the champagne pressing. Even if I were to press multiple bottles of champagne, I only had to pay the coin once. You'll notice there's also a picture here of a little meeple. This means if I want to make wine instead of champagne, I have to uh, use the services of my meeple who's down here ready to make wine. This is the reminder. You pay coins for champagne. You pay meeples for... Um, 
for wine, the barrels of wine, but you only have to do it the first time in a given turn. So we're over here. I have already paid my coin to, to press as much champagne as I want. So I'm activating this. It is my The first one is 3 plus 3 plus 1. That is 7. So uh, that is very nice. I get a level 7 bottle of champagne. Now it's going to get housed in this. But here's the interesting thing, folks. Did you know in real life when these presses are run, they're run multiple times. They try to get as much of that sweet grape juice out as possible. And this game replicates that because when you activate a press, you activate it twice. The first time it activates, you get your best stuff, which is why you get that plus 3. But now I'm going to squeeze these a little bit more. But the second one, I don't get the plus 3, so I'm going to get a 4. Which means I take one of these, and it's interesting, um, I don't know if it was a production restriction or what, but there's only odd-numbered um, tiles for the champagne and wine. But then you've got these little over here, so I basically put a 3 plus 1. So on the, my first of two pressings, or my first of two actions, remember, I'm doing a level 2, or Jen's doing a level 2 actions. So her first action was to run this press twice, squeeze the life out of these grapes, and they just go back to the uh, supply. And Jen is now storing a level 7 and a level 4 champagne. Okay. And by the way, that second one, it didn't have to be another champagne. It could have... Oh, it could have been a barrel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Jen, her first one, she spent a coin to say, Hey, I'm pressing some champagne. And, uh, and she did so. And she spent that coin, got a 7. Second one, she's going to spend this meeple. This meeple now goes up to the mansion, exhausted, just sitting up there, not really doing anything, to, you flip these over, to do a barrel instead. So Jen got a barrel of wine and some bottles of champagne, a level 4 and a level 7. And that was just Jen's first action. She now gets to run another press. And because she has already paid the coin and she has already paid the meeple, when she runs this second press, it can either be a um it could uh, this could either be getting champagne or um wine out of this single grape. And here's the interesting thing. Mm, ooh. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Folks, um, it's you, you pay that cost per press. No, wait. Whoa, 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 folks. I just made a very, very big uh, mistake in what I just said. And I'm going to make this mistake for the rest of the run through. So, uh, as always, folks, please have the Klingon subtitles turned on so you don't miss this kind of stuff. But here's the deal. Once you have paid to make your champagne or your wine, that's it. You only have to pay once, even if you use your second and your third press. Now, I'm doing that wrong in the run-through. I'm making myself pay that cost again for every single press. That is completely incorrect. Unfortunately, the way the rule book is written, it is very, very easy to make this mistake. I bet a lot of people will make this mistake. Uh, but what I said right up front at the beginning, that you only have to pay once for the entire um, pressing action, uh, you know, whether it's for the champagne or the wine, uh, that's the way it goes. You don't pay per press, even though that's what I'm about to do for the rest of the run through. So bear that in mind, folks. I am, um, you know, taking on a huge penalty here and you can get more done in the same amount of time. So let's continue. So, no, okay, then Jen hasn't spent her meeple yet. And she just, uh, for this one, she only spent, because she only has one meeple, uh, she just spent the one coin to make a bunch of champagne. Now she's going to activate this one, and she will spend the meeple to make two more um, things of wine, two more casks, uh, barrels of wine, rather than um, you know spending more coins to make more champagne. Now she did champagne, it's a plus two. But remember, when Jen makes wine, um, it, she can apply to one of her presses this plus one. So Jen's going to get plus one, and she's going to make two wine out of this. This, all right, so she spent the one coin to activate this. She's spending the one person to activate this, which means she runs it twice. This is going to be a one plus one. So it is going to be a level two cask of wine, which means you take a one and put another little plus one on it and put that back. And she's going to do it again, squeezing everything she can out of those grapes. And so she has... Jen now has three barrels of wine. And remember, I don't, did I mention this earlier? One of the goals is have three 
or four barrels of wine in your things to get seven or 12 points. If I'm paying attention, I know that's what Jen is working her way towards. That's why I was thinking, oh, she could have actually gotten a fourth one here, but she would have needed another meeple down here to be able to uh, do wine on both of these presses. But still, uh, she's pretty happy. Now she's got a whole. She she cannot press in. She cannot harvest anymore because there's no room for anything. She needs to go sell this stuff. Um, but we'll worry about all that in a bit. Uh, so Jen's turn is over. She did a level two press. Um, first of all, she activated this, which cost a coin. Then she activated this, which cost a meeple. And uh, she is done. Although, actually, before we go on, there's one more thing I forgot to mention, folks. On your turn, you're going to activate one of these columns, do a level one, two, or three action of it, pay resources, whatever. In addition to that, every turn, you can do one of four free actions. And so far, we haven't done any yet. But before Jen is done, before Jen is done, she's thinking maybe she would want to, because one of those actions is immediately sell any one of the uh, pressed wine or champagnes you've got for a coin. Just, you know, make some money right off the bat if you're if she needs some money fast. She could do that right now, but I don't think she's going to. I think she's got some bigger and better plans because she is saving up to complete that objective. So will she pull it off? What am I going to do next? Well, folks, let me tell you, we are just getting started. And if you would like to watch us continue, you want to see Jen make a big sale, complete that goal, you want to see me press some big wine, uh, you want to see a bunch of other actions, well, hit that eye up in the top right corner screen and go to the extended gameplay. I've still got a lot to show you. Or if you're just ready to hear what Jen and I thought of the game, you can also hit the eye or follow the links down in the show notes to go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.